at juggling and flow arts. Many juggling conventions now include disciplines that do not necessarily fall under the traditional definition or idea of juggling. And the term juggling is increasingly referring to other prop-based manipulation skills such as Diablo, devil sticks, poi, cigar boxes, contact juggling, hooping, hat manipulation, many, many things. According to the Flow Arts Institute, the term flow arts is a general term used to describe the intersection of the variety of movement-based disciplines including dance, juggling, fire spinning and object manipulation. So what is the difference? Is there a difference? Please help me welcome to the panel today Asaf Moore, juggler and performer from Israel, Richard Hartnell, organizer of many conventions, also contact juggler and artist from the US of A, and Morten from, uh, sorry, from Denmark, um, juggler and performer. Welcome guys, thank you for joining us on the panel today. Okay, Asaf, tell us how you started juggling and uh, what's been your uh, background and experience with uh, juggling and the flip arts? Yeah, so I started in 2003, I was a kid and we had like our pick of sports classes at school and I really didn't like football or basketball or any of that sort of thing. So I ended up started, jugg starting, started juggling there and uh, me and maybe a couple of other friends kind of took it a bit more seriously and kept on training after those classes stopped. And I was mainly focused on boy after like learning the basics with everything uh, but I was always training with jugglers it was in like the juggling club that I went to I was probably the only boy spinner maybe there was two others and then I would run into others randomly but no one that was really technically oriented so my experience with boy was always like training with jugglers and trying to learn moves off them so I was already like trying to combine the two and then recently, in the last five years, I've been doing mostly clubs and been going to circus school in France. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, you have a very uh, unique style with your clubs. I've been to many juggling conventions this year and I, uh, I see people uh, attempting to do a few things that you're doing, but you have, you have very solid acts with yours. Um, it's, uh, the, there's clear influence there from the flow. How has this uh, come about that you've uh, created these type of acts? Yeah, actually my, my philosophy on how I look, like how I explore moves and concepts, I try to really not think of the limits between like this is a staff move and this is a club move and this is a poi move. And, like, I try to translate things from, let's say, a lot of my juggling is based on tutting, like these sort of shapes with the microphone. And uh, I try to apply that concept of angles to, to clubs and then a lot of, about half my act is just th that concept. And then a lot of my club's tricks are things that I saw with balls, like body tricks are much more common with balls than with clubs and I try to apply that like I try to apply that the way ball jugglers do body tricks to clubs and see how that works. So I really work a lot with uh, drawing inspiration from other disciplines and other objects and uh, dance and this sort of thing. So I really try to draw inspiration from as many places as possible. Okay, thank you very cool. much. Richard. Thank you. Hi. How, how did you start juggling and, and what has been your background and experience with juggling in the flow arts? Uh, so I'm, I'm primarily a contact juggler, which means I sort of straddle the line between jugg like the juggling and, and flow arts scenes. Uh, I, started, uh, I started juggling, I started taking it more seriously because I, um, I was already chasing like the flow state, like the state of mind that was like dissociative and, and you know, uh, t had elements of time dilation and ego dissolution. Uh, as a working DJ and before that even in the service industry where I found this sort of like really uh, uh, meditative practice just making coffees or playing records or doing whatever 
uh, and I thought, well, what are the what are the cr sort of creative food groups? Like, how can I go to feeling like I'm meditating all of the time, in the same way that like I eat a burrito now and a salad later, and like an apple a couple of hours from now, and drink some water and, and whatever, right, to satisfy my my um, my body's needs. How do I satisfy the needs of like the personality or of the creative impulse? And I thought, ah, I should take up a dance practice or some sort of movement or embodiment practice. And uh, it, that was right around the time I had been messing around as a contact juggler. I did what most manipulators do. I practiced until it got hard and then I quit. And I came back years later uh, after seeing a fire show when I thought, oh, I really should have an embodiment practice in my life just to be a complete person. And um, then I went home from, from that event where I had that realization and I saw my hometown circus troupe and it was all over from there. I saw them like encoding positive messages in compelling art and I thought like as an activist that's what I want to do. You can't force anybody to have your opinion but you can um, make them want to listen to you through things like compelling circus tricks or cool art and then if you can encode a message of caring about other people or realizing that everything is connected or uh, quitting a job that you hate so that you can live your own life then um, that's what I want to help people realize and then I fell in with that troupe and then contact juggling just took over my life. I ended up uh, performing and started throwing street shows. And then after a large number of street shows, I made more money doing that than any day job I could ever have. I quit my last day job in 2009, moved to California to become a full-time artist, and the rest is history, I guess. Because I have uh, seen you on uh, YouTube. You have quite a lot of uh, videos on YouTube or have been posted of you on YouTube because you've done a few Edinburgh festivals. Is yeah. that right? After EJC on Sunday, I will fly to my sixth or seventh fringe to pay for the trip to EJC and then some other stuff. Yeah, what, uh, and, and, you, and that's where you do street performance there? Yeah, among a lot of other places. I throw shows all up and down the West Coast and around the world. Whenever I go to a new country, I always try to... Uh, to, to get a show in and kind of you know put my foot in the water and, and see whether it'll be good and fun and uh, and all that. And over time, my shows have gotten better enough that I can not have to worry about making every last dollar and I can kind of go and maybe throw a show that might not be so successful but is more fun or whatever. So it's, it's, been, it's been a hoot. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Richard. Morton. Oops. Okay, we have the mic. <laughs> so tell us, how did you start uh, juggling and what's been your background and experience with uh, juggling in the floor? Um, well, I first started back in 2006 where I met a few other people that were spinning a bit of poi, a bit of stuff, nothing special, just a bit of fire spinning, a bit of playing around. And, um, and I started to learn a few staff moves and I got inspired to learn some more uh, because I really, I really enjoyed it. I liked the pushing of creative, uh, creativeness through the body. So I bought a staff, but uh, unfortunately I grew up in a very small village and they're not a juggling club mm -hmm. when you have like 20 houses or something like this. Um, so for the next like four years, I pretty much just practiced a little bit every now and then in the backyard, like that was it. And then in 2010, I met other jugglers in Copenhagen who were talented uh, poi spinners, staff spinners, also some club jugglers, whatever. And we went to the EJC actually in Finland and from there on, it pretty much took off because I got a lot of new input for, for boy and for staff. And then I went traveling. So I was traveling for, for like uh, four years since 2010, um, which gave me a lot of uh, possibility to first of all practice in the summer when it's winter in Europe. And uh, second of all, meet like lots of jugglers from around the world and get a lot of inspir inspiration for new styles, new way of doing things and whatnot. And, um, yeah, then I moved to Copenhagen, and now I'm living in uh, Germany to focus more what, on... Yeah, I was going to say, what is, the, uh, what is the motivation behind the move to, to Germany? Well, the th um, I personally really like the, the scene there is in Leipzig, because you have a, a city which is already a very creative city, a very open city with lots of space, and on top of that, you have a lot of jugglers, and somehow the city matches really nicely the needs of a juggler. Um, and also it's less windy and it's a bit warmer than Denmark, which also really helps for juggling outside. <laughs> yes, the weather is uh, in the Scandinavian countries is definitely a consideration for a, a juggler. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so let's, let's uh, have a look at our topic for today. 
Asaf, um, actually, well, no, we'll start with you since you have the microphone. Um, <laughs> it's like we could put, put you on the spot there. Um, so we are talking about the, the, the terms, uh, really, about the, or are we talking about the terms between juggling and flow arts? Is, what do you think? Is there a difference? Uh, and, and can you explain the, what you feel the terms mean to you? I've, I feel there is a, a difference, but it's not an exclusive difference. It's, I don't think it's a difference that there is like a hard line. You say uh, light and dark or bad, good and bad. Or it's, like, it's, not a, it's not an opposite, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, but I still feel like there is a difference. And for me, in, in my opinion, I see the main difference in how um, people want to express their art. Like I've, uh, I have the feeling that juggling wants to express their art in a way that uh, always pushes for more, like create suspension, and then there is a release, like people go, <sighs> you know, you, you throw five clubs up in the air, you catch five clubs, <sighs> he did it, like, mm -hmm. there's this uh, moment of, of building tension and releasing it again, um, and thereby building more and more, but the, but the flow arts community doesn't really, like, in my opinion, flow arts don't really build this suspense in the same way, they more work on creating something that looks very, organic, almost like a dance with the, with the prop. It doesn't have to be dance moves, but still in a way that it looks like the, the body and the prop are moving in a way that is like meant to be or something like this. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Asaf, what about uh, you? What do you? What's been your experiences with the, the, the terms juggling and flow arts? What do you think? Yeah, I really see them as different approaches to the same thing. I find it weird a little bit that there is some like, that a lot of people spend all of their convention in the flow space and they don't really inter like that there is this sort of separation happening. Because for me, it's the same thing. Maybe because even if you're a ball juggler or a club juggler, you have people who stand in place doing technique and you have people who dance with clubs and it happens with all of them. And I don't, I don't feel like it happens with poi, it happens with staff, it happens with, with clubs, it happens with everything. So I really think it's just uh, like for us, for jugglers, uh, technique would be numbers and side swaps. So it's a bit more mathematic, let's say, and it's more oriented towards difficulty. Mm -hmm. And technique with uh, all of the spinning props would be more geometry, so more creating shapes. And then... Uh, so yeah, it's still sort of, there's still this mathematical difficulty and mm -hmm. so it, I, I think there's different approaches to the same thing, but it's still the technical jugglers and spinners look for difficulty and to, some people are more dance oriented, some people are more visually oriented. But yeah, I feel like, I, I really feel like they sh there shouldn't be as much of a separation and I still see both of them as juggling. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And Richard, Richard. What's, uh, what's been your experience? Because in, in the US, there, uh, my understanding is that there, there is quite a, uh, an obvious difference uh, between flow arts and juggling, or, or is that the case? Uh, to a degree. I'm from the West Coast where we tend to blend that boundary. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the spinners and the jugglers and hoopers all kind of hang out together and ignore that, uh, that division. Uh, it does still exist, you know, the three communities often tend to hang out separately and I really feel what Asaf was saying, like when I hear people like, when I hear people under the flow arts uh, like moniker say, oh well, you know, flow arts is different from juggling because flow arts includes dancing. I asked them like, didn't you know that ballet is on a huge number of circus school curriculums? You know, that's really, uh, you know, you have kind of two, yeah, it's like two sides of the same coin, really. There, there are flow artists who stand still and only do tricks. There are jugglers who stand still and only do tricks. There are jugglers who express themselves dissociatively. There are uh, spinners who express themselves dissociatively. Um, I come from a circus background. I, start, I started in a circus guild in a circus community, and then I moved down the West Coast to the to San Francisco Bay Area where everybody was identifying as a flow artist. And I thought, ah, flow artists, they're obsessed with flow and like that thing that I've been looking for in my juggling practice. And I was like, okay, so you guys are trying to get into the flow like, um, like jugglers and like dancers and like cooks and like writers and like bicyclists and like gardeners. And they were like, oh, whoa, 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 no, we're actually just talking about fire dancing. Uh, so that to me, like, uh, I've always thought, once I realized that flow arts was essentially a fun, uh, like a fancy name for fire dancing, 
uh, in mixed company around non-circus people, I just tend to say fire dance because if you say flow arts, they go what, and then you say fire dancing, or you say it's just like object manipulation. If you say object manipulation to a non-circus person, they go what, and you say it's circus, but the part that isn't acro, clowning, aerial, or like trick horse riding or whatever, and they go oh props, okay. So to me, the term is kind of redundant. We already have a term that's inclusive of all prop-based art forms, uh, but exists within the circus community or like the manipulation community. Uh, and I tend, I tend to think that flow arts is not just like a bit, uh, a bit confusing to non non flow artists, but uh, also excludes things like writing or gardening or whatever. Uh, and, uh, kind of in the same way that juggling like doesn't automatically include hooping. Or, or fire spinning, like we tell people like, oh yeah, you're going to EJC where like Europeans mostly know that juggling also means rollable and Diablo and like, uh, you know, balance, face balancing and stuff. Uh, but even that still has yet to like penetrate sort of the collective consciousness. So uh, I, I sort of hear all of you saying that, that you do see that there is a, a fusion between or that there isn't really a difference between uh, the two. Um, so do you think that it's... Uh, is it misleading then to be calling juggling conventions juggling conventions or is it all under the one umbrella? Uh, I've had some comments this year from people saying that uh, that the juggling convention, the name of it, uh, like the Indian juggling convention, for example, next year are looking to actually change their name because they, they feel it is no longer representative of, of, of the different types of people and the different uh, disciplines because the English, uh, sorry, the Indian juggling convention uh, has, is is, is has a lot more uh, it's again flow out so fire because it's a big thing to uh, have fire um, so they're considering a name change what what do you think about uh, the name of juggling conventions is it is it still an appropriate term it's tricky when we're, if we're talking about like a convention for circus people to come together and practice uh, we're talking about a term that's uh, used, being used within our community. So if we say uh, juggling convention, or if I say circus convention, in mixed company, people don't think about juggling, they think about trapeze or tumbling, right? Uh, at least in the States. Now circus has stopped meaning juggling or clowning. People think like uh, aerial acro and that sort of thing. Um, at that point, it's, it's our job within a community, I think, to break these boundaries down. Uh, that, you know, you see a lot of like crosstalk or criticism between these two groups and you have like flow arts people being like, oh, well, juggling is so cold and sterile. Uh, but they don't consider that you have to practice harder when you can't light your prop on fire and it's not automatically interesting, right? Uh, and you have a lot of jugglers be like, oh, flow artists, they just want to get high as if like there's, as if nobody has ever like Im improved their creativity or their like art by taking drugs. You're, you're just you're just outlining some stereotypes at the moment, uh, right? And I, I think like both of those groups have something to learn from each other. That like uh, that flow artists like you know they do have to practice harder uh, because they have a tendency to fall back on the fact that their props are automatically more interesting because they're on fire to an audience, right? And that's why it's like of course that's why jugglers make fun of flow artists for not practicing as hard. It's like you know, you could be really good looking and just get by on that. But like, if you're good looking and you practice, then like you super win, right? Uh, and at the same time, like jugglers can't afford to relax. Like jugglers, jugglers can stop pretending that like nobody ever learned anything by having dissociative experiences, whether you learn those things by falling into a deep movement practice or, you know, eating something that you bought in a coffee shop or a smart shop or something. Uh, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, and I think that it's really up to us to to recognize our own our own limitations in that. And if you're a hardcore numbers juggler, be like, oh yeah, of course I belong at a like a flow festival or a circus festival uh, or even like a hoop convention or whatever because we're all doing the same thing. And I think that it also is the responsibility of like flow scenes to be like, look, and we're doing that in the USA. Now there's a huge number of spinners coming over being like, oh yeah, it's, it's called the European Juggling Convention, but really everybody is there. There's people doing trapeze in the gym right now. Like there's clowning workshops, there's, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's really just all of us doing the same thing. Asaf, I just, I, I, I actually consider you to be a, a very good role model in this respect to for this uh, fusion and what you've been doing with your act. Uh, and what, what do you think about that? Was that something that, that you thought about, or have have you thought about that in your creation that you wanted to 
to uh, to share to help this divide come together that Richard's talking about that it's our responsibility within the community to bring people together because when I see your acts that's what I feel like I'm not sure if it, was that a deliberate thing or is that just happened or, uh, or I didn't what do you think about think that it wasn't a conscious decision to like bring those communities together I do want to see that happening and I'm I'm glad to see friends of mine that are people like Gail or Josh who are like doing like I, I see Josh training staffs and I'm like, oh, you're doing sta uh, club moves. And it's cool, it's cool for me because it's kind of how I work. And yeah, I, I really like that these boundaries between props and between techniques are kind of disappearing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what I aim to do with my, with my work. And I think it comes from the fact that I have like eight years of poi before, before starting clubs, so I'm going to do things that are similar to flow arts, even though I don't see them as, you know, as separate. Uh, actually, when it comes to conventions, there are a few really good examples that, uh, that I like. I was just in Mad Skills in June in Canada. Uh, that's a really, really good convention. And they call it a juggling and flow arts convention because uh, from what I understood, like the, uh, a lot of conventions had the, this problem of like, if they call it a juggling convention, then the flow artist wouldn't come. And if they call it a flow arts convention, like I did, I went to spin out right before and I was almost the only club or ball juggler there. And then spin out was pretty equal between, it was kind of like EJC, like what, much smaller. It was about two or 300 people, but there was a pretty equal number of, uh, of flow artists and jugglers, uh, and I really like that. Uh, I think this interaction between those two communities is really important, and this is what um, makes for interesting and creative acts. If you like, if you choose to push yourself to find new, to ex really explore what you can do with your discipline, then you can still. If you're only interacting with flow artists as a flow artist or with jugglers as a juggler you only see people that do something really similar to you. Whereas if you're a club juggler and you go to a convention where there's also hoopers and poi spinners and staff spinners, you can see, oh, that's, that looks cool. I can try the staff trick with, with clubs and, and see how that works out. Thank you. Uh, Morten, what do you, um, do you have a comment about uh, this for? Um, yes, I do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I also try to combine the two. Like I, I had it as a specific goal for years that I wanted to be able to perform on stage with Poi with an act that would impress people that juggle clubs. Because I've seen so many Poi acts where I was like, okay, that's a good act, but somehow it didn't work on stage without the fire. Like there was something missing. And I feel that for me, anyway, taking my contact juggling, what I've also been doing next to Poi, and combining the two into contact Poi, uh, really helped to step up the game for something that becomes very interesting on stage that creates the spinning shapes but at the same time has the technicality and the, the suspense of the dropping, chance of dropping. Um, and now I'm combining lots of other things like staff tricks and club tricks and uh, some devil stick stuff and whatever into the poi to, uh, to try and, and fan out and make it as open a prop as possible because I see it as a very much a limitation that a lot of people think if you cannot do it with fire, it's not worth learning. And you see this a lot in the fire spinning community, the flow art scene, and I think it's really a shame. So I'm also something I've been working on to try and break that um, and just do tricks because they look nice, not because you can only do it, you cannot do it with fire. Thank you very much, guys. Unfortunately, we are out of time for our panel today. Uh, so thank you very much, Asaf, Richard, and Morton, and I wish you all the best of luck. It sounds like you you're doing really great things uh, within the community to to help uh, bridge these uh, these uh, divides that are uh, happening within us. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Hey, what's up, guys?